This is our Sister Kim motion offense. It's called Sister Kim because part of the time it looks like a washing machine spin cycle. And Sister Kim does a fabulous job taking care of cleaning our church. So this is the Sister Kim. Now this is a motion offense, which means everybody is moving most of the time. Basically it's pass and move, pass and move. Uh, the only two times you might dribble in this play are if you are driving to the basket or there's one spot where the corner uh, gets the ball and brings it back to the wing by dribbling. Other than that, it's pass. But every time you pass, you must move. Basically, it's a cut to the basket every time you pass. And then that leaves your spot empty, so the other players rotate to fill those empty spots. That's exactly how this play works. Now, the very first movement would be that the top passes to the wing and cuts strong to the basket. The wing can then pass it back to that cutter to score, and the play can be over. It's that quick. Or that wing may fake the pass and keep the ball. So here's what that part looks like. Once again, remember that bounce pass needs to meet the cutter on her way to the rim. Here's what it looks like again. I'm going to do this one more time. Has to be a bounce pass. Cutter must go on the side of the paint where the wing will be able to make that bounce pass. It can't be through a bunch of defense. So here it is. Okay. Now, if that pass is not made, the wing keeps the ball. The wing has several options at this point. Uh, the, that wing with the ball can drive to score or drive in to shoot. But she has three pass options as well because these players are going to rotate. The wing on the other side runs to the free throw line looking for an open shot. So that's the first pass option. If that's not open, then she runs up to the top, and that's another pass option. The, the spot that she emptied out is filled in by the corner where the cutter is going to run. The other pass option is that wing could pass to the corner. And so let's look at all. If she does that, what does she do? Cuts to the basket. Every time you pass, you cut to the basket. Whichever of these three options, she's going to cut to the basket. But here's the rotation with the pass options. Okay? So once again, look. Here's the drive. But if the wing keeps the ball, here's the rotation with the pass options. The other option being to the corner. All right, once again, from the beginning of the play, here's the drive. You could pass the ball in, or if you keep the ball, they rotate, and there are the pass options. Okay? Now, when that wing does pass that ball, she is going to cut strong to the basket, and the corner is going to fill that spot that she vacated. Whichever pass she makes, it doesn't matter. But whoever gets the ball, when she cuts to the basket, you're going to look to pass that ball back to her for an easy play at the rim. So she could pass to any of those spots, and they're going to fill each other's vacancies just like that. Look at that again. Pass to any of those spots and cut. Corner fills the empty spot. If the corner has the ball, she dribbles to fill that spot. One last time. Three possible passes. Drive to the basket. Fill in the empty spots. And that's it. The play is reset and it can start over. It can go in either direction. Let's run through it one more time because I know it's a little complicated. So here's the original from the top. A pass to the side with a cut to the basket where you could get it passed back to score with a bounce pass. If the wing keeps it, the, the off-ball side transitions to fill in those spots, then the wing with the ball passes to any of those three spots, cuts to the basket, and replace by the corner, and then that wing runs to that corner. Okay, that's it. This play can keep recycling itself. It has many, many different ways to score, and we'll look at those specifically at practice. Thank you very much.